this is Teresa Jackson. Today I'm going to talk about Photoshop's brush panels. Actually Photoshop has two brush panels. There's the brush panel and then the brush preset panel. At first glance they look pretty similar which can be confusing. I'll admit to having been confused for some time myself. While these panels share a close relation to each other they have very different purposes. I'm going to show you what those are so you will know when and why to use each. You can open these panels by finding them under the window drop down menu. You'll see a check mark by both of these, meaning that they're open on my screen. If you scroll through this window in the brush panel here, you see a lot of similar icons to what's shown in the brush preset panel. And this is where they're closely related. But what you see in the brush panel here is not exactly the same thing as what you see in the brush preset panel here. These brushes are the shape of the brush or the brush tip. Brush presets are the same brush tips but with saved sets of options. I'm going to change my panel view to explain this better. If I go into the panel options in the upper right hand corner, I can switch to the small list view. I think this is a lot easier way to see what's going on. So right now I have the preset hard round chosen. It's using the second brush tip here. If I click on the hard round pressure size, it changes and adds pressure sensitivity because that's a saved option, but it's using the same brush tip. So if I choose soft round preset, it switches to the first brush tip and if I choose soft round pressure size, it's the same brush tip but with the pressure sensitivity turned on. Now we can see that in the stroke preview down here and that option is available to me because I'm using a tablet with pressure sensitivity. If we go down to soft round pressure opacity, we're still using the same brush tip but this brush stroke fades in and out because the pressure opacity is active. If you're used to going to the options panel here to choose a brush by clicking in this drop down, you're choosing a brush preset, not a brush tip. If you change your brush by choosing one of the brush tips from the brush panel, you're going to retain the same settings from the first preset that you chose. I'm going to switch to the soft round pressure size because it's a little easier to see. So I chose this brush from the brush preset, but now I want a hard brush. And if I go to the brush panel and choose this brush tip option, it changes to a hard edge brush, but it still has a pressure sensitivity. And we can see in the brush preset, it's still saying soft round pressure and it's not a soft brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna create a custom brush so we can see how this actually works in practice here. But I wanna start with a hard round. So I'll select this preset. Then I'm going to double click these just to collapse them so we can see. And I'll add a new layer, a new blank layer to my canvas. I'm just going to paint two straight lines here next to each other. And then I'll go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, give it a name, two lines, and say OK. Now it loads automatically into my brush here. If I start to paint, You'll see what we get. This isn't really what I want though. I don't want my, um, my strokes going vertically, so I need to adjust the options for it. Let's open the brush panel. I can spin this around here and spin it 90 degrees and close this back out. I'll create a new layer. And now you'll see that the brush goes like this. That's not exactly what I want either. I want it to spin around as I paint. So I'll create a new layer here, go back to the brush panel, and then go to the shape dynamics. Under angle jitter, I have an option to control the angle jitter, and I'm going to change it to direction. We'll collapse this again. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Now when I paint, I get a completely different look. The brush will spin ever so slightly as I change directions with the brush, which creates a really nice effect. But now I need to save this as a preset, the brush that has the controls that makes it spin around that way. So we'll go to the options drop down for the panel here and choose 
new brush preset and we'll call this one barbed wire. Now if we open the brush presets panel and we scroll all the way to the bottom we'll see two new brush presets. The first one that I created when I captured the brush and the second one that I saved with all of the settings. So when you create a custom brush it's typically a two-step process. First to capture the brush tip which saves it as a brush preset with no options and then second to set all of the options and save it again. Let's open the brush panel and see what we find there. Because I saved the second brush preset with a captured brush size that was smaller than the original brush, there's two brush tips now in my brush panel. And the only difference between these two is the size. It's the brush preset that stores the information that controls how the brush actually acts when you paint with it. With a few adjustments in the brush panel options, I can get a completely different style brush, something that's maybe more like chopsticks than barbed wire. Let's take a look in the brush panel and see what those settings are. So under Shape Dynamics, I gave it some angled jitter. I left the control set to direction. Under Scattering, I took the count, I took the scatter up and I took the count to three and the count jitter up from there. And if we come back up to the brush tip, down here in the spacing, I crank that spacing way up and that's what throws those chopsticks out in kind of a wide pattern. Now that you understand the difference between the brush panel and the brush presets in Photoshop, it's time to get creating some custom brushes and see what you can paint with them.